let me see. I cannot. Um, I wanted to start recording so that we yeah, could get our call cool. underway. So yeah, this yeah. is all great stuff. Sorry, I, I jumped out to grab my coffee. Uh, okay. This is Connections Over Coffee. And Winnie, tell me again, where are you coming from? I heard you telling uh, Carmela. Yes. So I lived in Columbus for, I think, 18, probably 18 years. Okay, so you you understand the pain <laughs> of the weather. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The winter, right? Of course, <laughs> shovel the snow. Wow, the driveway covered by snow. So always snow started before Thanksgiving. Sometimes <laughs> I should say, getting cold usually is the Halloween evening. So every time I took my daughter to the trick treat, she have to wear the down jacket. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So I moved to Georgia because the job changed. I moved to Georgia. That's why I only attend your meeting once. Okay. And now, now I'm in Georgia. I found I have time today. So I, I joined, but I cannot stay too long. I have a, a meeting at 10 30. So probably I have to. Okay. The course Perfect. Then. Well, thank you so much for tapping in this morning. We're glad that you're here. And of course, Carmela, I heard her sharing that she is in the Lima area. So if you're familiar with that whole Ohio geographic yeah. area, you know, she's she is kind of in the middle of everything, a little bit north of me. Um, I'm I actually say I'm Columbus, Ohio, but I'm actually in Canal Winchester, which is about eight miles southeast of uh, Columbus. So, uh, again, I don't know, Carmela, how, how far apart do you think we are? Maybe an hour and a half? um from canal winchester i'm probably about maybe two hours from you okay so not horribly bad of a drive oh. and you would think that we would see each other more often but we don't <laughs> so I'm anyway to columbus tomorrow but it's only for a uh trader joe run so my okay. daughter like, are you stopping and i'm like well i really wanted to go to trader joe's and come back home so <laughs> which which trader joe's do you go to um, usually the one on Sawmill. Okay, you just you just barely make it into Columbus then, clear on that so, north. I mean, I'm like five, probably five minutes from Jade and then, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then nice, that's a nice location. Yes, <laughs> yes. Sasha, welcome. We're glad you're with us this morning. So tell everybody where you're coming to us from today. Hey, good morning. Um, I am in uh, the Nashville area in Tennessee. Um, I'm from uh, Columbus, Ohio, though, um, recently moved to relocated to Nashville. And uh, I think it was end of May. So. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so you are in Nashville. We are not that far. I'm in uh, North Georgia. Same. Oh, okay. No, no, not that far. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I used to live in Louis Center, Ohio. So, oh, moved okay. To Georgia, North Georgia last year. Okay. 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 Yeah. I love it. I love it. And welcome, Debbie. How are you this morning? I see that you are on. Oh, there you go. And tell us, <laughs> tell us, tell everyone where you are coming from today, this morning. Uh, I am south of Columbus because if I say Buckeye Lake, that's small <laughs> except Nobody, everybody everything. here knows columbus so yeah okay so, so i am over is. by yeah. buckeye yeah. lake yes and, I love uh, that. good morning to everybody good I, morning, I was um my husband is watching a a storm chaser up in B buffalo <laughs> who is driving through the, the whiteouts <laughs> and showing you know what it's like up there and of course i'm very familiar with the area so it's like ah i mean the snow is more than halfway up the signs wow and this is going on right now i haven't turned on my my news or weather today so mm -hmm. well this is a storm chaser that happens to be on youtube and okay and yesterday by noon they already had nine inches with this <laughs> wow. storm Oh my, okay. So so you know that if it's continued snowing, it's high. And of course, like the first thing I thought of, oh my gosh, the lake isn't frozen yet. <laughs> so there, the, the, and I still have family that lives up there. So yeah. No, so is you. that is that where you grew up, Debbie? Is that is that the area where you grew up? Is is North New York? Actually, um yes. I was okay. um, in um, 
just uh, 30 minutes, not even that south of uh, Buffalo. Oh, so you were up there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, so I love I, that area though. Oh gosh, that's a beautiful part of the country. <laughs> I love all that. So um, again, I just want to say that this is Connections Over Coffee and you do not have to be entrepreneurial to jump on the call, but many of us are entrepreneurial. So we sometimes, the conversation sometimes goes that direction, but this, this is just to get to know everybody. I've got my coffee. One of the things that we do is we pick up a cup from every place that we traveled. So this morning, I happen, mine happens to say Arizona. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like it would feel good right now to be in Arizona? Um, but anyway, oh, Sasha lived in Massachusetts for six years. So she's familiar with the snow. I get it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, we get cups everywhere we go. And, um, and so a lot of times in the mornings when we get our coffee, we'll say, where are you going today? And I'm like, I'm going to Arizona. So anyway, it just kind of reminds us of our trip. And, uh, and we kind of, you know, we'll, we'll share some of the high points on what our favorite high points was of the trip and some of the areas we love so much that we've been back several times. And so, um, you know, the high points get all mixed up after a while. It's like, which time did we see that? So we, we just, we love to travel. And, uh, and I know some of you do too, because I, I follow you. <laughs> so some of you like to travel as well. And our big aha this past month, since I've been on this call with everyone is um, we flew into New York City to see a Broadway show and mm -hmm. we were just there for three days and flew home but we we did definitely got our money's worth as they say because once we landed we decided to do two things number one is we found a second Broadway show while we were there my favorite Chicago is my favorite Broadway show of all time hands down has everyone seen Chicago no Yes, it's my favorite, and I love live performances, and so uh, the gal that, that played one of the leads has been playing that lead for 20 years, and of course, she came out on stage, and uh, yeah, uh, right now, I'm in the middle of, of a whole weight loss program, and I'm trying to drop 50 pounds, and I've made it 25. I've got 25 to go, so I'm halfway, um, but this gal walks out on stage, looks amazing of course if you've seen the broadway show chicago they're all in their little short you know 62 years old <laughs> i was like she's how old <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> oh my gosh i thought if i could look like that um anyway it's not all about how you look it's about being healthy and how you feel and i i get that but i think as a female you know we always have that little thing going on in the back of our brains that you know we want to look nice you know we want to wear our clothes well and uh, no I don't want to be on a Broadway show and I don't want to wear a skimpy outfit and do what all she was doing uh, but my I, I was just I was just so proud that that this was her dream and obviously she's living her dream and she's been doing that particular performance for 20 years so imagine eight shows a week exactly the same for 20 years <laughs> and it was an amazing show but again a lot of the performers had been in the show for some time because uh chicago has its own theater on broadway um they're not a traveling troupe that are looking for theaters to perform they have their own theater right on broadway and so they are in the same theater doing the same show, eight shows a week, year after year. And folks come to New York to see that particular Broadway show. And so they have it down to a science. Um, I mean, you know, the, the precision in the show was unbelievable. And Mark even said to me, he goes, how do they get that kind of precision? And I said, doing it eight times a week for 20 years. That's how they get that kind of precision. Um, but the, it was just perfect. I mean, we're talking perfection. The, the whole performance was just perfect. So then um, again, ladies, don't hate me. Um, the second show, which is the one we went for, was to see Hugh Jackman in, in live, in person. Yeah, Sasha just went, oh, <laughs> in the Music Man. And so um, I went there just believing that, um, that Chicago was my favorite Broadway musical. But after seeing Hugh Jackman um, in the Music Man, uh, let me tell you, it, it ran a very close second. <laughs> and, uh, and, and in a few of the scenes, I was like, okay, so this is now my favorite. And I was like, no, no, Chicago is still my favorite. But 
Hugh Jackman in The Music Man is definitely a close second. And uh, and I don't know about you, and and uh, and I don't know that it's just a girl thing. I, I think, you know, Mark tears up sometimes too, but I caught myself tearing up a couple of times in both of those performances. They were done so well that they they suck you into the plot, you know, they suck you into the performance. And, uh, and I actually teared up a couple of times in, in each of those performances, they were done so well. And, 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 and you felt such empathy for, you know, for the underdog in the, in the performance, you know, the person that is struggling, you know, uh, to, to whatever the struggle was in the, in the, uh, uh, the Chicago one, it's, it's, uh, the girl's husband, Remember, she just always plays him off like he was a nobody. And uh, and he even does the song, Mr. Cellophane, you know, that nobody sees him. And uh, and, and and I teared up over his performance because he, he did it so well. And the whole audience did. And uh, and then, of course, in the in the music man, you know, you've got the little boy that that stutters and 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 uh, the kids won't play with him and nobody will have anything to do with him. And and he finally learns how to play a musical instrument and and he becomes, you know, the hero of the show. So, so anyway, so that's, that's just what I wanted to share today. Um, I, I love, I love everything live. And uh, I was just sharing with Carmela that uh, we have a condo in Sarasota. We go down every six weeks and stay for 10 days. And in Sarasota, we're right in the heart of the theater district. And there's live theaters, maybe six or seven right around us. And they're very inexpensive, like $24 a ticket. And so um, we, we try to go there uh, two or three times every trip. So yes, Debbie. I wanted to just put into perspective, that's 8,320 shows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no wonder it was precision. <laughs> no wonder it was precision. Now, one time I counted, and I don't know what the number is now, but I was in LTech for 25 years, and I did probably, I'm going to say I did about 20, I would, do, I would do 10 gals a day, 10 appointments a day, 10 hours a day, and I would do that not always for five days, sometimes six days, but at least 50 appointments a week, and so um Gosh, how many weeks is that? So 50 a week? Well, there's 52 weeks. Yeah. And so um, that's 2,600 times no 25 way. years. 65,000. I did 65,000 hands, clients. So that's now, now, times that by... 10 fingers and how many nails, you know, <laughs> cause I did acrylic. So I had to sculpt each nail. So anyway, I did that for 25 years. I figured it up once. It's a lot of nails. <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, I'm retired from that now. And, uh, and so now I, I just do my mastermind calls and, uh, and we, we travel as much as we can. So, so that was my highlight since I saw you guys last. Carmela, what's been your highlight since we talked to you last? Um, well, it's been a while because I've had so much going on. Um, I was just in Florida three weeks ago. Granted, I had to go for a funeral. Um, however, though, I did get some fun time in. Um, my sister rented a resort that she was thinking about, you know, buying into. So I did get some enjoyment there. The weather was perfect. Um, like you, Kathy, I enjoy going to Broadway shows. And I saw Hugh Jackman a couple of years ago at one of my doTERRA conventions because it was right after he did The Greatest Showman. Okay. And, oh my gosh. Oh. He is like fabulous. And I love that. And I am a very emotional person. I too cry because of the precision. I used to think because when my daughter used to dance and compete, I'm sitting there. My husband's, are you crying? Shut up. Leave me alone. <laughs> I was watching a show the other day. One of my girlfriends told me about it. So um, I pulled it up. I can't even think because I have the Roku, but it's the real dirty dancing where people compete and you find someone is going to be, you know, a Johnny and then someone's a baby. Oh. I'm watching this reality show and I'm crying 
because the one is struggling and I'm like oh my god she's a little heavier she doesn't have the dancer's body and I'm like I can't believe I'm crying but you know you're it tugs on my heartstrings so um I'm getting back into my oils uh, you know not that I wasn't that I was out of it but I'm doing a lot more with them um I've been going um to the ex assisted living a friend of mine works there and as a director and so talking with the ladies and just kind of sharing some of the things and doing hand massages has been really really good I am trying to lose some weight just so I'm a little bit healthier um, I had a scare not too long ago my blood pressure jumped up to 190 over 118 and my legs were swelling up and I mean shoes could I couldn't fit in the shoes went shoe shopping my poor daughter I was like Cinderella no she would fit so but I'm getting back on track of things still taking care of my mama so now I'm getting ready for the wonderful Thanksgiving holiday which is one of my favorite holidays besides Easter is Thanksgiving because I just like you know being around family and just enjoying that time and now I'm trying to talk my husband into getting a house someplace warm because I am not liking the Ohio weather anymore, especially since last week it was 72 last Tuesday, I think it was. And then this morning I leave and I always say, I talk to Alexa, I'm like, Alexa, so what's the temperature? And she's like, well, Carmela, today in Lima, it is 27 degrees. Would you like to know the air? And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm like, it's 27. So it went from 70s to the 20s. So I kind of just want to put up my Christmas tree, which I think I'm going to do this weekend. I'm, I like the lights. I think that's mm -hmm. what it is. And just looking at the lights, it's just so comfy, peaceful, and that coziness. So I want to see white lights. So here we I go. love that. I love all of that. Carmela, that's perfect. I love it. And yes, I agree with you. Yeah, the temperatures here are a little chilly. But you know what? Now that we've got the, the condo in Sarasota and we're going back and forth every six weeks, I don't mind it so much because now when I get down there, it's kind of like, oh, I kind of missed the snow. <laughs> so now I'm ready to come back and see a little bit of snow because I know that in just a couple of weeks, I'm going to be back in Sarasota. So anyway, Winnie, I want to go to you next because I know you have to jump off soon. So tell us what's been your highlight since we, it's been a while since we've talked to Winnie. So Winnie, what's been going on in your world? So after I moved to Georgia, I didn't get a chance to join your meeting, but I always, so even I joined the once, I was very impressed, especially by the entrepreneur you always mentioned. I love all those. So I want to become an entrepreneur, but I still don't know how, how to start it. Then on and off for those jobs in the company, but I still think about you. You mentioned before you have lots of rental mm -hmm. and uh, I, I love all your stories. So you well, I'll, I'll tell you what, just go to kathybinner.com and scroll down the homepage of my website and just tap into all the free stuff that, that interests you. Uh, and that way we can help you get started if you want to, if you want to get started on something. That's great. So you yeah. said you have a condo. Where's your condo? I, I have a condo right in Sarasota. We're just 10 minutes inland. So we're 10 minutes from the Gulf side, you know, all of the, the Bradenton beach and the Sarasota, that whole Bay area. We're just below the Skyway bridge. Is in Florida? Yes. In Florida. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, so Beautiful place, especially in the winter compared with uh, Ohio. Yes, yes. And we fly Allegiant Airlines, which oh. is a, a discount airline. So it's only a couple hundred dollars for us to fly back and forth. And we're four miles from the Allegiant Hub here in Columbus. It's at Rickenbacker. And we're four miles from the Allegiant Hub in Sarasota. So yeah, we're rather spoiled. <laughs> Everything works perfect. That's yes, great. Yes, yes. And I didn't know that when I found it. I bought the condo strictly on price point. It was the price I could afford. Everything else was twice the price. And I knew that we could rehab it if it needed updated. So I grabbed it. And then after I was in contract, I discovered 
what a great location it was. Uh, <laughs> is, is the HOA expensive there? The how's what the, now? How's the HOA of the condo in Florida? Well, it, it they're, they're very, it, everyone oh, is, is different. It depends on what amenities come with it. Ours is only a couple hundred dollars a month. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I heard yeah. some friend get a condo there, like HOA is $1,000 per month. Yes, there are some that are, but keep in mind, see what all that covers. Like I, I looked at a flat in New York because I look for real estate everywhere I go. So we went to New York, of course, to see these, these plays, to see the theater. And while I was there, I had to, of course, check out some flats Well, because I thought, wouldn't it be great to have a flat in New York? <laughs> and mm -hmm. so um, they were $1,000 a month HOA fees, but it included 100% of your utilities. It oh. included the heat and the air and the electric and uh. the taxes and the insurance. And <clears throat> it included everything. You just paid one flat HOA fee and it covered mm. everything because it was oh, more of a co-op. Yes, and, yes. Um, and some of those older buildings, they have that boiler heat where the whole oh. building has heat and that and they can't separate it by unit and that's oh. why they included in the HOA so so mm -hmm. when you're looking at HOA see what is included okay that's good to yeah. know thank you yeah. thank you yeah. Casey and I understand that you might have to jump off and I get yes. that if you disappear so thank yeah. you so much for being on today and uh, and again if you go to kathybinner.com yes. You can scroll down the homepage, see all the free stuff. But okay. then if you keep scrolling, there's a calendar of events and tap into as many as you'd like. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. And thank you all. Uh, happy Thanksgiving next week. Yes. Thank you. And happy thank Thanksgiving. You. Thank you. I, I have to. Oh, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Sasha, tell us what have you been up to since we talked to you last? Hello. Um, yeah, I think it's been maybe two three months. I don't know. <laughs> We've missed you. <laughs> it's just been a little bit crazy. Um, yeah, I've, I've had quite a bit of events, you know, this traveling, like it's, it's so weird that like a lot of times, like when this would be happening, I would actually be traveling during this time. So that's why I've missed um, the last couple. And um, my youngest daughter turned 21 in October on the 18th. So I was traveling for that <laughs> okay to go um spend time with her and um you know um help her celebrate her birthday but um honestly i've just been busy with business and um i also have i'm a author but i also have a bake baking business so um this is like a busy time of year <laughs> for me um getting those baked goods and things so it's just been a constant like baking and um getting people's orders together and like all of that so yeah after i jump off here i'm gonna do more baking <laughs> so. i get that now i just sent you i think just last night, I sent you another email. Did you? And I responded. A, a few okay, minutes, I haven't like, looked at my emails yep. this morning. So, okay. A few minutes before this call, and I, yeah, like, um, okay, I'm air and dirty laundry out here, but somehow I missed that email, and I'm, I apologize for that. It's weird. No, 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 that's uh, okay. I just slipped my radar, but um, yeah, really just been busy, um, like traveling. I've uh, traveled back to Ohio quite a bit, um, you know, for events there. Um, I did an event uh, here in Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. I've got one the weekend of Thanksgiving. So I've got a two day event then, and then a couple of things coming up in, in December. So um, just really doing a lot more um, like events, being out, talking to Now when you people. say events, what type of events are you doing? What is it that you do when you do these events? I think it depends on what, um, you know, which brand I'm. <laughs> okay. Which lane you're in. I get it. I got uh, it. Which one. Um, but um, I've been doing a lot of like author events. So um, okay. like I had an author, um, an, an author event that was just um, for um, black authors mm -hmm. um, in Ohio. And then I did um, one at the Pick Pickerington library. So I did the author event there. Um, okay. I had to do that. Oh, you were close um, to me. Yeah. Yeah. So that was in October, I think. Um, 
Or no, it was in, um, I don't know, September. I don't know. My days, have been, <laughs> it's been running crazy. And then I did an event at um, Ohio Wesleyan. Um, okay. A friend of mine worked there and she put on an event and asked me to come. Um, it was basically just vendors um, that were there. Um, it was uh, uh, their, their first like Black Wall Street event. Okay. So she okay. asked me to do that. Um, and then the one here was a craft show. So I just had like my baked goods there um, and sold out like before the end of the show. So I was like, oh, great. That's good. Sold out of my stuff. Um, and then coming up, I've got, um, it's a vending event, but I'll have both my brands there. So I'll be able to like have my books as well as like my baked goods and okay. um, do things with that. So um, yeah, just... It just depend, really kind of depends. I've been trying to get more into uh, the markets here in Tennessee um, so that I can get a footprint. Um, you know, I have plenty in Ohio, so that's why I've been traveling is because okay. you know, people are requesting more. You know, um, it was weird. It's like after I left, people were just <laughs> requesting me. And I'm like, okay, so I left. Now I have to travel back. It's, it's crazy. But um, so I'm trying to build more of a, a footprint here in Tennessee so that way I don't have to travel as much um, back and forth uh, to Ohio. So um, it's going pretty good. Like I'm making connections. Um, I, Yeah, just doing well. I can't, can't complain. You know, blessings are continuously coming in and I'm so grateful for everything that I love I that. To do, so. Now, what I've done is I've invited Sasha to be on my podcast for my Ohio Writers Guild. And so I'll be interviewing her uh, on our Ohio Writers Guild. And then all of those interviews are uploaded into the Kathy Bennett International Academy. Plus, I have a whole Vimeo channel and I have a whole YouTube channel and I have a whole Audio Boom channel. So uh, so it'll it'll actually uh, get the word out for her. It'll help promote her, which is my goal is to try to promote some of these authors. And, um, and, and I, you know, let's talk about everything that you're doing once you're on the podcast. We'll talk about, you know, the, the fact that you're baking and writing and traveling, and we'll talk about all that. I love it. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh -huh. So since you're doing a lot of baking, how does your baking go come in the holidays? Do you do much baking for yourself then? Um, I mean, whatever's left over, I kind of like keep for like family like it's not really you know it's like usually some people that well at least the friends I know that bake mm -hmm. they're like oh well the family they get leftovers because I'm so busy this is my time to rest and kind of yeah. vegetate it's yeah like it's kind of that like I I try to plan and bake ahead as much as I can and then so like whatever will preserve because some things you can put in the freezer that will you know preserve uh -huh. and then once they're thawed out they're still you know, keep their um, integrity, but like, um, yeah, if I'm doing like baskets or anything um, that people are ordering, I try to make them like for that time. So like that it's fresh and, um, but no, like, so this um, weekend I'm doing more baking and sending things to my girls because we won't be together for Thanksgiving, unfortunately, um, because they have to work. So I'm sending care packages and then to my grandmother and um, a friend of mine. So like I'm doing some baking for that um, because the window for like anybody else through my website is closed for Thanksgiving is just next week. So I wouldn't be able to do that. But um, yeah, for myself, it's just kind of like, okay, I have enough for them and then, you know, put some away. But I, I'm really trying not to keep a lot in the house because I do have a sweet tooth and I'm you know like on that weight loss thing with everybody else um I so I'm down 90 pounds since last year so like I'm wow I've got another 50 to yes. go, so. congratulations wow that that is that is so hard to do and kudos to you um, around my house, of course, I run a bed and breakfast out of my home mm -hmm. and I put out some nice pastries in the mornings for my guests. And so Mark is only allowed to eat the broken ones. And so, um, so every, so every time I'm, I'm working in the kitchen, he's like, could you break a few of those? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I can't. And he goes, please. 
because he's only allowed to have the broken ones. <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> Need to send Mark a care package for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so that's funny. And if I go to the store and if I buy anything ready made, he he tells the cashier. He goes, Could, he said, he said, drop that package, would you? He said, I'm only allowed to have the broken ones. He he rats me out to the to the cashier. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyway, Sasha, it's great to see you. Yes, go ahead, mm -hmm. Debbie. Um, you said you were an author. Um, what have you written? Um, I wrote Write Romance. So um, I'm on Amazon. I'll put my website in the chat as well. So you That'd can check great. that out. But I have uh, 10 published. Um, oh, my. Then, yeah. So. I love it. Swan Song. I like that. That's cool. <clears throat> thank you so yeah a swan with the two ends that's kind of like my family name so my grandfather um his last name was swan with two ends and so I just kind of like put that together and um my music background is kind of like the song part of it and just I don't know like but you know I've heard many people look at it in different ways um like someone told me they look at it as like the last um you know, before someone passes away, they have that swan song, that last, um, you know, life. And then mm -hmm. so um, they looked at it that way. So I kind of leave it up to people's interpretation on, you know, what yeah. they get out of it. So. That's pretty cool. Thanks. Thank you. And I'm making some notes on, uh, on my end for when I do the interview. <laughs> <laughs> that way I can look up a little bit of stuff before we get started there. So anyway, perfect. <clears throat> yeah. Debbie, tell us what, what have you been up to since we talked to you last? Uh, um, <laughs> I, well, we had the summer months, which were not very good for the, for the garden. And so <clears throat> I was able to at least make uh, use of what I had, which meant um, my daughter's um, mother had grown corn. So I was able to get some corn from her because our corn did nothing, absolutely nothing. It was awful. And um, I mean, let's how many, this. how many acres do you have, Debbie? Well, we have 23 altogether, but um, <clears throat> a lot of it's uh, farmed out, it's mm -hmm. rented. So that's, that's, that's good. Um, but to put it into perspective, when we grow corn, um, I have enough to put up <clears throat> for the next year, <clears throat> excuse me, and sell a lot and give a lot and <clears throat> not a <laughs> but anyways um i may do with what we had and same with tomatoes <clears throat> and um just kind of keeping busy i spent two weeks with my daughter in Charlotte and had so much fun. And in fact, I got all my Christmas shopping done. <laughs> so I don't have to go get anything. <laughs> Good for you. And, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, just lately, <clears throat> um, I found <clears throat> my sister who has been incognito for over seven years. Um, two weeks ago, we found out she's living in Georgia only by the fact that she was in the hospital and the person she was with let us know. But she's home now and she's doing fine. But then this past Monday, um, my son-in-law, my favorite son-in-law, by the way, um, he... Uh, let us know. In fact, it was just after I got off the call with you on Monday mm -hmm. that um, his brother um, 
had just been found um, from an overdose. Oh. And they found out, they found out that um, the stuff he got a hold of was laced with fentanyl. So he became a, one of those statistics. Oh, I so, hate to hear that. You know, and you know, it really makes you stop and think about really, you know, what's going on out there. <clears throat> Sorry. Until it hits home. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's there, but you're not really impacted by it. So um, other than that, I've been um, uh, searching a lot in my spiritual um, uh, path, and I'm finding that <clears throat> I have to write this book because that's part of my path. It's it. He keeps showing me that this is what you need to do once you get your book written. And until you do that, I can't take you any further. So, you know, and I'm sure you mm -hmm. all can understand that. Yep. So, and and clearing clutter out of the house. I mean, when you stop and think about it and get into the little nooks and crannies, it's like, oh, there it is. Yep. <laughs> it does collect, doesn't it? Years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. So anyways, that's pretty much it. I just keeping myself busy. And uh, I haven't been on here for, no, I try to be on every month, don't I? <laughs> it's it's hard time. though. Yeah, it's hard. And But you know what? It's so hard to keep connections like this where, where you don't have an agenda because a lot of the calls that you get on, there's an agenda and it's like, you're always thinking ahead, you know, what, it's my turn to talk. I better have something, you know, credible to say. And, uh, and so it's just, it's, it's just relaxing to know that this is just, this is just a way uh, to make connections with folks and, and to meet you where you really are and no pressure, no, you know, you don't have to try to, you know, put on the Ritz as they say. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I like I'm, that. The one thing I want to say is, you know, I, and this goes along with what you just said. I totally agree. It's just, you know, one screen of people and you always have to be on, on, on guard as to what you're going to say mm -hmm. and have it ready. But yesterday I had a coffee break with the lease uh -huh. and we talked on zoom and I'm going to tell you it was the most amazing time. Mm -hmm. So we've made it a date that we're going to do that once a week. How fun. Like, That's nice. You know, we, we need to, we need to take advantage of Zoom for that mm -hmm. because it's, it's been given to us and a lot of things that came through COVID, you know, this is the one thing where you can connect with somebody on a personal level and not have all the distractions around you being in a restaurant. And, and you agree that when you do that and you're in a restaurant, it's hard to have a, a concrete conversation without somebody dropping something mm -hmm. over there and you look over there. And then like, for me, it's like, if it drops over there, then I drop what I'm thinking. And I don't remember where I was. So, you know, it, it, um, it, it's, it's because you don't have time and we can do it anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. whether you're in Florida or Carmel, you're in Florida or, or Sasha, you're in Tennessee. It's nice to still be connected mm -hmm. on a personal level and, and not have to be in the same room. Well, and, and I also, I have the, the Zoom app on my phone. So um, yesterday, exactly. Kyle is, is our realtor for our Happy House Hunters group. And he wanted me to talk with his broker 
Um, all of you remember when we lost Stephanie, which was um, our in-house realtor for our Happy House Hunters group, and she passed away. Um, it'll be two years this January. Can you believe that already? And uh, so anyway, she passed away and Kyle kind of stepped into her shoes and it was, you know, some big shoes to fill. But he wanted me to talk to his broker yesterday, and I wasn't at a place where I really could get in front of my computer. So we just tapped into Zoom, and um, uh, his broker and me, the two of us, we were on our phones. Kyle was the only one that was sitting at his desktop. But you really couldn't tell the difference, and we had a, a wonderful face-to-face -face conversation, the three of us, and it felt like we were in the same room together, and, uh, and we were all just on Zoom. So, yes, Debbie, I can appreciate that. Uh, Sasha mm -hmm. says in the chat that she's sending thoughts and prayers um, for you and your family, Debbie. And I want to, I want to say uh, also that I am as well. I know that's a tough time. Um, for those that you may remember, we lost Mark's son Scott that same way. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. So yeah. So we lost we lost Scott too. So, and he was and thirty. Hard. He was thirty seven. It wasn't like he was a teenager. You know, and and I believe Eric was in his late thirties. Okay, and he he wasn't married. Mm -hmm. See, neither was Scott. Yeah, he he had been in and out of jail, which doesn't help. And his dad found him. I mean, I'm oh. sorry. I I just that's just so hard. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Nathan's mom that's my son-in-law um eric is actually a brother from his mother's previous marriage so um so and melissa doesn't handle death very well and well i think I, I think also too and and i know mark went through this is that he struggled with what what should he have done differently yes yes you know he felt okay. some some level of responsibility and or guilt thinking that he could have prevented it somehow had he, you know yeah. had he seen something earlier had he known something earlier had he talked more you know i mean it was just so many what ifs and uh, and he still he still struggles with that today and yeah. i i get that yeah it's very hard because even knowing people and even like with some of the younger kids and I know someone personally at 15, they tried to take their own life and God, you know, who's always watching, they weren't able to go through with it, but it's, it's so, you know, and then this type of season, and I missed you guys so much because it helps, not only is it enjoyable to talk and just commune with other entrepreneurs, but it's like this life life raft like for me in a sense because you know with the craziness of the day-to-day -day and different things um it just is an uplifting thing and now with the weather it's like in i had i don't know if i heard or read where they say this time of year in the holidays is the most depressing time for people too and you know i kind of experienced it because I think with my change in life, they put me on something. I go, I'm crying. I'm emotional. I said, I'm like a basket case half the time. And so she's like, well, because your hormones and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, and that's why I tend to use my oils. And now I'm like, you know, Carmela, you need to put your lights up. And you guys know that I've always been busy doing and helping other mm -hmm. things. And I've actually taken a step back. Um, I got a call the other day, two days ago, a girlfriend, she says, are you on your way to the meeting? And I'm like, what meeting? Oh, they're, you're part of the committee, the tea party. I said, oh, I says, we have new pastors. So there's a new sheriff in town and I'm not signing up to do diddly squat. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, the hat and the matching jacket. So <laughs> And even though how hard it was for me to say no, I'm like, you know, they're reaching out to other people that was never involved. So I'm thinking that the director is telling them, Carmela does everything. So I'm kind of taking time for self-care now. 
I mean, uh-huh. that you've talked about it ever so much. And I didn't realize sometimes how hard it is to even do that self-care. But um, yeah, my heart goes out to your family, Debbie, your son-in-law and everything. Um, with losing my uncle, it's been very hard because it was my dad's brother. Um, two days ago was the nine-year anniversary of my dad passing away. And for some reason, it was like hitting me really hard. And each year is different, you think. And it's like, do you really deal with it? It's like, how come some years are so heavy and others? And maybe it's because I just lost my uncle. And he was that one where everybody, he could make each person feel so special and so important. He had hundreds of nieces, but he could call me and say, you know, you're my favorite niece. And I would believe that. Even though I know you tell that to everybody else, even at my age of 54, I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I felt that way. And uh-huh. his youngest daughter that was adopted, I mean, she's taken it hard. And even like with my aunt, I try to check in. We have like a text messaging thing every morning. She'll text, just send something encouraging. Have a wonderful, blessed day, you know, have something. And it's encouraging. And it was like, really hard and I'm trying to take life um, face value that you know it's Mm -hmm. precious you know each day is not promised to us so I'm trying to enjoy you know the little things you know the small things so to, to add to that I can I can you know it's easy for us to express to others what they need to do for self-care but we don't listen to ourselves we don't do it and um and i'll just share this with you guys um since these you know my sister coming back and and this this poor kid dying um this week it's been seven seven years since my mom passed and each year has been fine but for some reason this year it's I'm feeling lonely I'm feeling I don't want to say depressed but it's it's a sense of I don't I'm not going Christmas shopping for I'm not taking her Christmas shopping to to buy things for the grandkids, which would be her great grandchildren. I'm not doing that. And um, I miss her. I'm missing her terribly. And and I I will agree with what you said about the Christmas lights. I love the Christmas lights because they're so soothing and relaxing. And you can turn off all the lights in. And it's, it's just, you know, awesome feeling. Um, I have a landing up on the second floor. And um, believe it or not, I have three evergreen trees up there. And they all have lights on. And they stay on all year long. And to me, it's, I, it's, it's a symbol of peace that's that's why you know you'll see christmas trees with white lights out in public um they were they were decorated that way for peace for in memory of our soldiers and our warriors that protected us and and that's why i keep those lights on and they're just small trees one's a pencil tree and the other one's those little three foot ones but they have nothing on them but white lights and and it's and it is you know i can sort of get the feeling of christmas but yet not with everything else but i am i'm getting ready this year my christmas is going up for for at the weekend of thanksgiving nobody's going to be here i'm going to do it because i want to experience the whole month and not just the week before christmas and then all of January. Because <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I put them up that late, they're not coming down the next week. 
Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I Thank love that. Sharing. Thank you yes. for letting me share. Sasha just posted that uh, she said, I'm sorry, ladies, I have to leave the meeting. Enjoy your day and Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, she had another call that came in. So she had to jump over and take another call. So, but it was great to see her on this morning. And uh, Debbie, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I can, I can picture those trees on your landing. Um, yeah. I, I, and I'm just now thinking to myself, when I get to Florida, I don't want to do a great big Christmas tree. And of course, I don't want to have a tree with snow on it because that looks really out of place in Florida. But there are evergreen trees all over the, the Florida state. There, there are evergreen trees there. So I think, well, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can just do like three pencil trees and just put white lights on them. So, yeah. yeah. So you've, you've inspired me. Good. I, I'm, I'm glad. Um, I've had this, this pencil tree since I owned my shop in, in the 90s. Okay. So it lasts for a long time. <laughs> wow. Good to know. Good to know. So let's talk about what, what is coming up in your future that you are excited about. And for those of you that know, I published in September. And so I have been, you know, interviewing folks on the Ohio Writers Guild, and I've been doing it on Zoom like this, and an author will come on, and we'll just go through uh, an interview, I'll record it, and then I give all of the links back to the author so that they can use it to promote themselves. And then I also have the link that I can use to promote the group. And so, it, you know, the tide rises all ships. But I've discovered that I'm getting some requests now to drive out in person and do a book launch with authors and actually do the interview live in person during one of their book launches, maybe at a local bookstore or a coffee shop or, or however they're launching um, their book as an author. Maybe they're a first time author and, uh, and they've never really had a launch before. And so I just posted my most recent one on uh, the Facebook group, the Ohio Writers Guild, and it, it shows me and Dan Morrow uh, just setting, sitting behind a table at a little uh, indie bookstore in, uh, in Delaware, of all places, Delaware, Ohio. And, uh, and, and, and I'm just interviewing him. And it was the most wonderful interview. He was so easy to talk to. And uh, I really enjoyed how that turned out. And so um, I think I'm adding that to what I'm going to do is that I want to help folks um, launch whatever business or whatever book they're writing. I want to help them actually do a launch, an actual physical launch where we record it and, and give them some mileage and something, if nothing else, it's something that they can hold on to. It's something that they have, you know, if you've ever had a big milestone in your life, it's nice to later have pictures or a recording of that just as a memory. Like I did that thing, you know, I did that. And so uh, if somebody is doing a speaking gig or, or whatever, it's just kind of nice to have something to remember it by. So that's kind of what my um, new thing is that I'm looking forward to in the new year to, to do more of that. Uh, and Carmilla just had to grab a phone call. Uh, so Debbie, what is it in your future that you're looking forward to doing? What's coming up for you? Well, um, in January, we have the company launch like we do every year. And, but in uh, now do you travel to that is that like a big conference no. okay um, the only one <clears throat> we travel to is out in utah but um um january it's the uh it's it's uh what do you call that live stream okay so um and it's live stream from there to um everywhere you know so um, usually the past couple of years, I've had to sit here, you know, sit here at home and watch it. Usually we, in years before COVID, we would always go to Columbus, the one hotel by the airport. Okay. And, and, and you know, watch it there. You know, a couple hundred people would, would gather. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen, but... Um, I don't know. In December, I'm going to kind of leave it wide open and 
what happens happens you know i get it yep yeah so perfect yep carmela we're talking about what do we have coming up that we're excited for and how about you do you have something coming up something on the book something planned or a thought or a feeling or a direction that you're going in the new year um well I have been doing a lot as far as like, you know, with the oils, I'm still touching base. I'm thinking about getting into um, symphony of the cells, which basically I'm using my oils, but unlike a regular massage, it's lighter. So it's not going to heavy on your hands, but it's just like gentle. And I've experienced it mainly with Farley because he's gone through some different things, but just giving that comfort and relaxation um a friend of mine she well like my one of my daughters another one she just recently bought a massage chair and when we were at the assisted living place she um did some chair massage and it's so funny some of these older ladies oh my gosh they were like oh i'm just like this feels good and it's like are you awake Uh uh-huh (laughs) <laughs> and it's like right there, right there. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. You know, you would have thought that <laughs> they were in heaven, but even like doing the hand things, it's mm-hmm. nice. Um, haven't narrowed down a date, but I'm going to be in Maryland. I think a little bit earlier, we're going to spend Christmas there. Oh, um, okay. I invited my parents. We'll see how that goes because, you know, with mom, it's up and down. Um, I, talk to them I have to go get her acclimated about going to adult daycare she claims she's not going to adult daycare I have lied I told her she's volunteering and it's like a meeting of older people (laughs) they go whatever works I'm like Lord forgive me but you know her how she is so this is my way of kind of getting her in there um, because I know some days it's hard, you know, on my dad and well, yeah. and you know what, knowing her personality, I think she will enjoy it once she's there. I think, right. so. I think it's going to be a win-win all the way around. It'll give the family a break and it'll give her some of that social connection. And, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, get her in there and, and everything, but I'm looking forward to this year, um, with family coming, um, Actually, Caden is coming for Thanksgiving this year. And, you know, he's at that age Uh and he hasn't wanted to be around family. So Danny, sometimes her and Nathan have taken um, turns who stays home with him for a holiday because he doesn't want to be around people. Um, Because See, now he was always outgoing when he was a little guy. So exactly. And it's just totally... I don't know what happened, Kathy, but things have kind of changed drastically um, because he stays at home because he doesn't even go to school anymore where he's around other kids. Um, I've tried to talk to him. I tried to bribe him with money, (laughs) but, you know, just to kind of get him out. So I'm wanting to play some games and do things with him. Um, How old is he? 15. Mm-hmm. So is this something that um, happened to him because of COVID? I don't know if it's that, you know, I, I don't like to tell people, and you know, it's my younger brother and I love them, but I says, sometimes maybe you could do this, but you know, they're right now, they're both at this thing, you know, not to try to put their business out there. Well, if he turns 16, he's out. And I'm like, you don't want to be so quick to do that. Mm-hmm. And I says, oh. and you can't show favoritism either. It's hard, but when you have multiple, I mean, you love them all the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I really say that from experience? Cause I only have one child, but look, I have so much love. I, look, I've adopted another grandchild at church, mm-hmm. five months old. I'm ordering, they, I told my daughter, I said, <laughs> you know what? By the time you decide to give me grandchildren, I've already got five, so. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) But I'm trying to get him active and I'm trying to reach out. But, you know, he just, it's like he was always so outgoing. 
And, and it's almost like, I feel like he's going through a depression of some sort and he shut down. Um, is there a, is there a, maybe a big brother program close by that maybe they could sign him up to have a big brother? Well, there was a guy coming over that was kind of like one, but he didn't want to do it. I mean, he rarely goes us for the longest time. He would stay in his room. And I kind of had one of those aunt, aunt talks with him. And I'm like, listen, if you come over, I says, you don't have to stay and talk, but I says, but proper, I says, manners. I says, you know, when someone comes to your home, you don't have to stay and have, a, but you need to come and at least greet them and speak and say, hello, don't hold up in there, but I don't want to come out. So I started doing things on my own, where if I'm in town for mom, on my, I have to pass by their street going mm -hmm. home. I would stop by. I would give him a Mountain Dew. Granted, I don't like it, but it's something he likes. Right. So I would give it to him just to let you know, you know, mm -hmm. here, you know, if you want to talk, I'm here. I love you and I'm there. And so just kind of, you know, reaching out a little bit because, you know, my heart just, you know, mm -hmm. breaks. I look at, you know, his cousins, I mean, your grandkids, I mean, how Coda, I mean, mm -hmm. they're out there doing things. And I said, maybe he should have been more in sports and did things because when I worked in retail and I worked for Dunham Sports, I'm like, any equipment, anything you need, call me. Heck, my one girlfriend, her son is like my adoptive nephew. And he was TT Carmela, can you do this? I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, how's your grades? How's this? I have no problem spending the money and buying it and sending mm -hmm. it to you and things like that. So but I'm well, I, yeah, I get that. And it's, it, yeah, that's really too bad. But you say he is coming for Thanksgiving? Yep. He said he's coming. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope it, you know, stands true. And I said, if he doesn't want to stay with other people, I says, you know, he can go back to the other room, but um, I want to kind of keep him engaged and mm -hmm. things like that. And, you know, I miss that you probably without dating ourselves, you probably <laughs> know growing up, it was about family. You had your aunts and uncles, you did things they had. Re now it seems like kids, it's like they're, they shut themselves off. I don't know if it was mainly COVID or what, but then some parents don't, make their kids if they don't want to do it they don't have to I don't recall really having a choice when I was a certain age it was kind of like we pay the bills you live here um you have to go here you know but and it's like a family you know I said uh -huh. you know, what's so sad there's so many broken families and I I as long as I'm living you know I'm gonna try to do something like that um um, we did have like battle of Thanksgiving hosts this year. Latance decided, oh, we're hosting it, but didn't tell anybody. And his wife is sending text messages. And the next thing you know, I'm like, uh, no, I've done it for 15 years. So I'm going to continue. Well, and, and, and that's hard too, because you, you know, you want to kind of play nice in the sandbox with everyone, you know. And families are the toughest sometimes. Right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, what, now, what, is your, what does your brother do when he's in the room? Does he play games or, <laughs> or you know, YouTube or what? My brother sometimes still plays games, but I told him he needed to do more with his son, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I know you work, but, you know, there's more to it than that. You right. got to take that, you know, you got to make the sacrifice. I look at it like this. When you have kids, you know, uh -huh. you have to learn to change. You have to adapt to them. I mean, you can be yourself husband, after they're gone. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, they grow so fast. My husband, they do. Jade was in competition with dance. And I know after a while he's like, oh my God, do I have to go to all these dance things? He goes, I love it. He says, but can we compromise? So he would go to her recitals. And he would go to one competition because, and in all aspects, yeah, a guy, I said, take a book because you got to watch all these other people's kids too. So 
<laughs> and she was in five different dance classes. So, but she well, loved it, but she loved it. So yeah, you know, I didn't mind all the girls who would hang with me and I'm like, I'm the fun mom. So that was the thing that we did. So I said, as long as you go to one and the recital, you're cool. I didn't even make him go to both recitals because there was always two shows. He would go to the one show <laughs> and then entertain family later. They're like, oh my gosh. You know? Well, I was a single mom, as you know. And so all of Jennifer's little girlfriends were always over at our house. And so I was just Jenny's mom. And so even now my Jennifer is gosh, 40 years old and I'll be out at the store somewhere and across the store, somebody will yell, hi, Jenny's mom. <laughs> they still don't know my name, but they know I'm Jenny's mom. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm not the only one, Kathy, because for the longest, I was someone's granddaughter. I uh -huh. was Nina's daughter. Then, you know, Farley's wife. And then it's like, oh, it's Jade's mom. Oh, that's uh -huh. Jade. I'm like, can I have my own identity? I'm Carmella. <laughs> Please, <laughs> Carmella. <laughs> Not somebody's mom or somebody's wife or daughter. No, I get it. I get it. It's all good. It's yes. all good. Well, this has been a great conversation. It's so good to see everyone. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that the other gals could, <clears throat> excuse me, jump in this morning and chat with us for a few moments. And I'm so happy that you know, we're, we're getting through the holidays. Uh, I'm, I'm getting excited about the holidays. Um, this was the first time that I actually got to sit on my step and give out candy at, at Halloween at trick or treat, oh, wow. because I've always been working in the salon and it's always, you know, I always would work until eight or nine at night. <clears throat> so this was a fun time for me. And so I actually took pictures of the kids and all their little costumes. And oh, it was I just a lot of fun. Those. <laughs> so that was a first for me. So I was excited for that. So and, and I get to host Thanksgiving because I'm the only one that has a dining room big enough to seat everybody. Um, Matt and Jen, they don't have a big enough table to seat everybody. And we are going to miss Dakota this year because he is at boot camp at Paris Island at boot camp for the Marines. So we're going to miss wow. him. Yeah, this is a big, big deal for him. We've been sending letters and he's been sending letters. And so far he's, he's doing okay. And uh, this has been a big culture shock for him. Uh, because, you know, he was the, he was the kid as, as, as in many households, he was the teenager that, you know, you couldn't get off the couch because he was there with his electronics playing his games. And uh, so now he's not even allowed to have a phone the whole time he's at bait, that boot camp. <laughs> he's, he's not allowed to have any electronics. So this is a big culture shock for him and they're keeping him busy. And he, uh, we know he's going to come back a different kid. We know that. Um, and, and it's going to look good on him. So we'll, we'll see. He's going to, he's going to come back. He, he left a, a teenage boy and he's going to come back a man. So, yeah. um, yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to prepare Jennifer to be prepared for that. And of course, Lily, my granddaughter just got her driver's license yesterday. Oh my and gosh. it doesn't she, seem like if they're growing. Yeah. Well, she'll be, she'll actually be 17. She turned 16 last December. She'll actually be 17. Um, here in a few weeks and so uh, she got her driver's license and uh, Matt and Jen found her a nice little car she's working at Best Buy um, I had to pick up a, a cord um, for my presentation the other day I had a speaking gig and I wanted to do a PowerPoint and I didn't have my HDMI cord so I stopped by Best Buy and she ran out and got to help me so she was all excited because she got to help me find my cord and check me out and all that get the cashier and and so uh, it's just it, you know it's just fun seeing them grow up and uh and then of course my little Corbin he's been sick this week he's had the flu so you know you feel bad for him and Jen's been home with him for a couple of days so hopefully he'll feel better soon but but he's he's the little guy and he's he's really kind of missing it because now Dakota isn't there he's at boot camp and of course he's going to get stationed once he graduates from boot camp and Lily's now working and going to school and has her own car and then there sits little Corbin <laughs> and he's used oh. to having everybody around so uh yeah so he's he's feeling a little left out right now like why can't he go to boot camp and why can't he drive a car <laughs> and how old is he Oh, he's only 10. <laughs> so anyway, it's all good. It's all good. It is. So yeah, it is. he's just feeling a little left out right now. And of course they live just far enough out in the country that, you know, he can't like run across the street to play with friends or whatever. Uh, you know, he has to come into town, but he has some close friends. Um, Matt and Jen, 
have another couple that they vacation with and they travel with and they spend weekends with. And the other couple has a boy the same age as Dakota, a girl the same age as Lily, and another little girl that's the same age as Corbin. And so when they go there, all the kids have a best friend, you know, so, mm-hmm. so it, so that's why I think the two families have gravitated together. And so it works out really well. So, and then we get invited to go over, you know, we're the, we're the, the pretend grandparents of all the kids when we go over there, <laughs> our own and theirs. So it's all good. So not pretend just adopted. Yep. Yep. They're all my adopted grandkids. So and 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 they have a a um, a Mexican background. Um, the dad was Mexican, um, but the mother speaks fluent Spanish, and all the kids speak fluent Spanish over there. And wow. they they have this coming of age thing that the girls go through, kind of like a, a bat mitzvah, and a bar mitzvah. Is that like a Sierra? What is it? Quinceanera or something? Yes. Like and so, oh my gosh, I'd never seen one before. It was the most amazing thing I have ever seen. I mean, she comes out in a full gown. It's like she becomes a woman, you know, at, at age 15 and they go through this whole ceremony and it was almost, um, it was just amazing. I mean, there was dancing, there was music, there was catered food. I mean, it was just this whole ballroom of folks dressed up and and she came walking in in this beautiful gown and and uh, so anyhow, now, you know, my Lily wants to do one. And of course, she's that's not her heritage. So <laughs> but there, that's the girl. You, that's the girl. You, you, you can let Lily make it up. Well, she, and she can do but, one. <laughs> but Lily, but Lily was actually they have this girl was allowed to have attendance and Lily was one of her attendants. So Lily did get to dress up and be one of her oh, attendants. Nice. That's cool. Jade, um, when her friend one of her best friends, she turned 16. She had like a sweet 16 and I was one of the chaperones. So she had her close knit and then there was like a group. So of the close knit, they ate at, I think it was red lobster. Mm -hmm. There was a little kid. He was like 12 ordering lobster and stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I was the parent that went along and their mom, they had an ice sculpture and everything. So, and it was fun. And then there was her wedding. She recently got married and her Nigerian wedding was last September. She had four gown changes. Oh my. Look, that was the longest. Barley went up to the hotel after one part and our well was in the hotel. He went up to our room. He goes, I'm tired. We didn't eat until like almost nine o'clock. And so, and then she had her American wedding this past June. That was in Cincinnati, Kentucky, and it was at a Catholic church. They're not Catholic, but it was beautiful. The Nigerian wedding that was just in September, they spent mm, roughly about $370,000. I can't wedding, even imagine that. The no. wedding in Cincinnati this past June, they spent over 400000 I cannot even imagine Far- that. Farley's like, no, I don't think so saw the dad he's a doctor that's his only daughter and he says now I'm waiting for Jade's wedding and I said oh my gosh I said Dr. Aziz I said no need to thank me but Farley and I discuss we will allow you to pay for Jade's wedding don't thank us go ahead pay for whatever you want we will allow this he just starts laughing he said I bet you guys will (laughs) wow I can't even imagine that, Carmela. I can't. I can't even wrap my mind around those kind of and numbers. Her, and her wet, regular wedding gown, she got it in Chicago. They took a weekend trip because my daughter went to Chicago just to get this gown. I mean, I got a peek at it. You know, I was one of the few. I couldn't show anybody, but I'm like, oh my gosh. But Jade, well, you know Jade. She's like, uh-huh. yeah, she doesn't want anything like that. Actually, she doesn't want a dinner for her reception because she goes. People want to talk to you. I want to be able to eat my food. So <laughs> there's no dinner. If I can't eat, no one else can eat. Just have finger things, you know? <laughs> that's funny. So that's her. But I says, maybe, you know, do a destination. But she rather, you know, have like a small ceremony and then have right. a reception, which Farley's like, I will pay for you to go off and get married. And I'm like, no, 
I need my time where I can cry and be emotional. So <laughs> that's right. And again, it's it's what I said before, you know, when I'm helping folks do their launches with their books or their business or whatever, it, you want to have those memories. You want to have those pictures and, and you know, you want to have that event to have those memories that you can can remember and look back on. And I just I, I, I remember now with my mom. Uh, as she was getting close to the end of life. And of course, we didn't know how close, but as she kept getting closer, um, she just kept going over and over and over all of her great memories. That's she, she took such pleasure in just remembering, you know, I remember when you and Mark took me to Boston and I remember when you and Mark took me to Las Vegas. And I remember, you know, she just remembered all of those events and it was just such a special time for her. So I think the memories are, are the memories that you're making is the most important part of all of those events. Ladies, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. We ran over just a little bit on time, but the conversation has been great. And it's, mm -hmm. I just feel like I get to visit you this way. Yeah, it's like yeah. what we were saying. Yeah, this is perfect. So until next month, have a happy holiday. Yep. You also. You yes, all as well. You both have a wonderful holiday. Yes. Yep. Enjoy your families and we will see everyone next month. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye everyone.